Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Welcome. Can you hear me okay? Good. That which is aware is eternally here now as I. When you engage in the inquiry through the question, who am I? What is aware? You are making the effort over and over throughout your day to return to the source, to return to the self, which is felt in the body-mind as I, or as the recognition I exist. Doing so You are reminding yourself that you are more than what you see, that in fact, that which you see, hear, taste, touch, smell, think, or feel, is less important in a way than the seer, the seer is the foundation, the source of all that can be seen. And so this inquiry, who am I, what is aware here? is this simple reminder to withdraw attention from the objects and to keep it even to a small degree on the seer that which is aware in this moment. When I speak about this in this way, it can seem as though it's fairly simple.
And while once it's understood, it is fairly simple to put into words the path of inquiry or the path of awareness. It often is not easy to do, especially in the midst of a busy life or a challenging object which has arisen on the screen of awareness. A short time before we started this morning, I received a voice message from someone who is in the middle of one of these difficult moments that arises. I think what I'd like to do is I'd like to try, we'll see, to share with you the voicemail. I'm not sure whether this is going to work or not but I'll try it. If it doesn't work, then I'll just try to explain to you something of her experience. But I think it's better if you hear it from her because it's a very, very good description of the ways in which the recognition I am aware is played often against the ego position of uncertainty or self-doubt. So let me try to turn this on for a moment. You tell me if you can hear it. If it's not good, then we'll just try something else. So. Namaste, Rishi. This is uh, Nina. I would like to come into satsang today. I don't have your email address, so I try it in this way. And writing is here a little complicated, so I thought to just take my question here, if that is fine. Is it possible for you to hear it that? like that, Rishi, that there is, I mean, I know you since one year, and it was a beautiful um, connection, this uh, field and this lockdown and grief. I was, and um, I have to say that I became very mental, more and more mental in the last year. Meaning that there is a lot of restlessness and resistance, but also it feels like a, a part of myself that I, I've suppressed with, I think, the, the last seven years. I can't describe it different. It's the personality of the Nina of her young age, and that is a very strong, edgy, spiky part, and this comes up and as there is not much con connection to to softness at the moment, I call it like that, or to be with people that are in their being, um, I put it on the outside again, there is awareness, there is, there is awareness in a way, but not like I, um, like it was lived before, um, like there was there is a realization, I am not this mind, also now it's empty, there is nothing without consistence. When I go to the sensation, they go. There is absolutely nothing also, but simultaneously there is a big suffering of emotion and of the mental, of the thoughts. It's like this mind, is, there is so much energy that it even hurts. When I go to the brain now and want to fear my brain, it's paining. I don't know if it is the menopause or if it's just stuff coming up, but um, I, I wish and long so much for being soft and love and um, just um, letting things be. There's a lot of confusion, Rishi, and um, pain and heart. And it's like, where's the ground? People say, I walk through water, go through grass, but that is not true grounding. The real grounding is in being. Sometimes 
it's touched, sometimes, ah, there comes this happiness that is, that is my being. But most, oh, and self-pity. <laughs> now I, I spoke a lot and forgot the question, actually. Mm -hmm. You can hear in her voice. Both the wisdom of self-recognition, when she says, that awareness is here, even in the middle of this, there's a recognition for her. And yet, there is this great pain, this great disturbance, which seems to be there. I've talked about this at some length over time, about the way in which the opening of the heart to the self also can open the pathways <laughs> to the ways in which the conditioned mind has limited us. This is a very good example, her speaking here, of what I've been talking about. That as soon as we begin to deeply practice the inquiry, which she has been doing now, as she said, for a year, that sometimes there's an experience of, I am that which is aware here now. And this is very firm. But then over some period of time, through some sort of circumstance or another, in her case, she's been living in India for the past year and a half during the pandemic. And so her life has become smaller and smaller, quieter and quieter. And so this place, which she wasn't able to reach before, or which was guarded from her awareness or from consciousness, this state, which she says in the beginning, she thinks is related to a time early in her life, meaning that it was suppressed in some way. Now that she has become very quiet and there's not so much outside distraction and she's continuing with the inquiry, what is aware here? Who am I in the midst of all of this? It has driven her deeper and deeper into these memories. This is very, very uncomfortable for her. And yet, at the same time, she says, I know that I'm not the mind. <laughs> and I know that these, this feeling, this disturbance is passing. And yet it is here. What do I do? When you are experiencing this kind of difficulty where you seem to lose this sense of self or this sense of heart,
Remind yourself to be compassionate toward this one who seems to be suffering. In the end, of course, you come to realize that this one who seemed to be suffering never existed. That this one who was suffering was made up of false ideas, false notions of who you were. <laughs> this is related to the idea that you are the body or you are the mind. This is an impression you have both your own, from your own experience and from others from the time you're very young telling you, you are this name, you are this body, you are this mind, you are good, you are bad, you are smart, you are not. All of these kinds of ideas come in, give us a false sense of who I am. And when we begin the inquiry, asking this question, who am I really? What is really aware here? All of this conditioning begins to unravel. And as it does so, it can lead to these kinds of experiences that she's describing where she knows clearly that she is the awareness itself and that she is not the mind and not the body. But nonetheless, there is this perception that there is someone here who is suffering. For this one, we have compassion. Even though we know I am that which is aware, and this is all illusory game that's going on in the ego. Nonetheless, when this is present, we begin with self-compassion. The object of the inquiry is not to sidetrack or deny what is here, but rather to see it clearly to recognize both it is here and it is not true of me. This is conditioning which is here. And I am not that. Approaching our conditioning in this way naturally leads us to the question, then who or what am I? <laughs> if I am not this, if I'm not this conditioning, if I'm not this challenging set of emotions, then who am I? Or what is aware of this challenging circumstance in this moment? This I call standing in it when these difficult times are here. The mind, the ego, which is, consists of the thoughts in the mind about who I am as a body-mind, this is ego. The ego can begin at a certain point, as it is for her. It begins to struggle mightily. It becomes very strong. Why is that? This is because, relating to oneself as an ego, as a body, as a mind, as a set of emotions, as a set of difficult circumstances, is a very powerful tool for the ego to sustain and maintain itself. The inquiry, what is aware here, who am I, is a very, very potent countermeasure. It's not it doesn't seem as though it's as strong as the conditioning at the moment that you're in the middle of it. 
the mind can even leap up and say, uh, pay attention to me. I am suffering. Don't ask those questions. It's not important. You can't get an answer to that question anyway. So don't bother. Just stay with me. Stay with this story. Stay with this suffering. And we'll just keep going. And of course, this is the way in which this recognition or this lack of recognition of the truth sustains itself. So I recommend to you that when you're having a period of time, as she is, of this kind of great difficulty, and you can hear in her voice the confusion <laughs> and the sense of suffering that's related to this experience of knowing who I am and yet having this great disturbance rise in awareness itself. When this is occurring for you, this is the time for you to increase your determination to return to the question, for whom is this experience arising? Or, when I think that this experience is real, who am I referring to when I say, I am confused, I am suffering? You see, the emphasis for us in the inquiry is not on the presence of confusion. That's simply a recognizing, oh, confusion is here. The emphasis is not on suffering. That is simply a recognition. Oh, this suffering is here now. The emphasis of the inquiry is on the who. Who is being referred to when I say, or when the mind says, I am suffering, or I don't understand, or I am confused. You see, it's not on the object of confusion, misunderstanding, suffering. That is there. But that is there, and this is recognized in this moment. That is there as an understanding that some form of conditioning is in operation at that moment. The emphasis is on the seer, on the I. Who am I? What is aware here? This does something for us in that moment. It allows this recognition that there is suffering present, that there is confusion present, that there is fear present, whatever that object may be. It allows us to pull some conscious energy away from that object so that it can play itself out in some way, eventually being completely undercut because it's not being fed by a tape loop or some ego position which says not I am the self but says I am that confusion I am that fear we pull that attention back away from it this frees it now does it free it to go away immediately just like that sometimes but not always Sometimes this fear, this confusion, and so on, will come over and over. Sometimes it will come over and over over the course of many days, and we'll just have to be in it. Other times it will come, we'll get some relief from it, 
and then it won't come back again till it's triggered again by some other underlying condition and it'll come back again. But whenever it comes back, when we ask this question, who is it that's thinking this thought? Who is it that knows that fear is here? Who is it that knows that confusion is here? Who is it that's experiencing this? Who am I? What is aware here? We pull that attention back to the self. We remain as the seer and we allow whatever is on the screen to just have its play. This enables us to stand firm in the recognition, I am, the self is, and not be completely sucked into this black hole of emotion, of confusion. The benefit of doing this, of course, is that eventually we become very firm in the recognition that I am that which is aware and that which is passing by is passing by. It's temporary. It is not permanent. One can say it is not real. Because the emphasis of the inquiry, it's often said in scripture, is on the real. But the real is described or defined as the seer, not as the objects which are seen no matter how intense they seem to be. So at a time like this, like she's described in this message, encourage yourself to just keep up the inquiry, to keep noticing that which is aware is here now. When this noticing is powerful and direct. It is felt as a pure state of I. Sri Ramana once said, even if all you know <coughs> is this direct perception, I, 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 that will be enough to take you to the self. Of course, you are already here as the self. But by this recollection, I, in its pure state, you make yourself available for the truth of your own nature to become obvious. And if you find yourself, as she has, I don't know if we got to that part of the message, but she talks at some point about this has been going on, this experience that she's having. This difficulty, this distraction has been going on for some period of time. So then you have to remind yourself that you have to be persistent. That the conditioning which may have taken a lifetime to build up the kind of momentum that she's describing, that that conditioning may take a period of time where you recondition the way you feel about it through the practice of inquiry. 
and come to recognize that you are not those thoughts, not that confusion, not that fear, and so on. This may take some time. It doesn't need to, but it often does. So, compassion, kindness, patience, persistence. These are the characteristics that we cultivate while doing the inquiry. Okay.